morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on a, you know, it's kind of a shitty Florida Wednesday. I really have to say the weather, which had been just fantastic uh, this, um, this winter, lots of cool fronts, lots of nice crisp days, has taken a turn for the worst. High temps are back, humidity is back, and, you know, I'm back to being completely miserable. And uh, what the hell are you going to do? I mean, and, you know, this is the worst time of the year in so many ways because it, it's the beginning of it, you know? You still get a taste of the... Anyway, look, I'm not going to ramble on. Long story short, the weather's starting to suck, and it's only going to suck a whole lot worse. And uh, that's where we are right now. Uh, we're buried deep in the bowels of the Curious Cars shop. Uh, I don't usually film from here or even do anything else from here, like, public-wise, because it's such mayhem. I mean, here's all the abandoned turds in the back, including, by the way, a 1950 International with a big block that was a victim of the flood and a Chevy Baja back there that might get restored. But uh, anyway, here I am. One of the reasons for that is, frankly, and I'm not going to look, I'm going to admit that I, I just, I wanted to drive this thing to Peter's. I planned on driving it to Peter's, and I chickened out and didn't. And it's going to the auction today, the premier auction in Punta Gorda. It's going to run on Friday. Uh, I've had this car for a couple of years. And it's, I, I just didn't want to drive it over to Peter. So I'm going to do a quick video for it, which I've been meaning to do for so long. And well, look, here's the deal. This is one of these cars that I bought while drunk. In fact, it's probably the most prime example of a car that I bought while drunk. And not really just a little bit drunk either, but a lot drunk. And Alan Chris, you know, Chris, you know, from the past, the worst human on earth, they were supposed to stop me from doing something stupid. And instead they didn't. They went off and had edibles or, you know, whatever it is that they do. And they left me to my own devices, knee walking drunk. I walked up to the auction uh, the deal maker and ended up buying this thing. And I remember being so happy at the time. And then I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh my God, I had this dream that I bought a, I don't know what it is, but I bought it and oh, I'm so glad it was just a dream. And then it wasn't a dream and there it was and here it is. And I've been wondering what to do with it ever since. And frankly, that's the question that I always get asked. You know, a lot of people think it's really cool. And then they ask, what are you gonna do with it? Well, I have no friggin' idea what I'm gonna do with it. I mean. You know, it's not going to be a daily driver. Let's just get that out of the way. It's not going to be a grocery getter. It's not something that I can put the lady friend in. Uh, it doesn't really even have a title. It's running drag slicks on the back. It's... <sighs> so it just sat here and I finally have decided to clear everything out that I have, everything, and this is going to the auction. I'll give you a quick look at the, that's an old Jag that's getting ready. I got two more here going, and, and you know, again, forgive the mess, but it's just the way that I live. Uh, we have this 54 five window pickup going, Chevy, nice old truck, very, very clean, kind of fun, and then this uh, Porsche Speedster replica. Uh, both of these actually belong to Penelope, but, uh, you know, we're in on them together. Uh, actually, i do a quick walkthrough of that. What the hell? You may as well see how terrible I live. Just junk everywhere. Uh, there's the office. We got a Roop go-kart sitting on a desk. We got old flintlock looking things and... You know, this is uh, this is Chris's room. You can see he has his own T-shirt hanging up. The worst human on earth. He's actually proud of that. Uh, we got a popcorn maker and a Keurig. So basically everything you need. And uh, I've been renting this shop out for a while for now uh, just to get stuff ready and do stuff. But I can't wait to... I'm going to sell everything I own and end up in a trailer. I swear that's coming soon. But what I did end up with, again, is this Dragon Wagon, this 1974 Pinto Squire Wagon with, with the Ford Big Block and the engine sticking completely out of the hood and lifted in the back with 
drag smex and there it is and it's in grabber blue which is a very cool ford color um i'm still dicking around with twitter by the way and this car has showed i put up videos and photos that i don't do on youtube because they're too short or weird or not marketable or whatever so if you're at all inclined go over to x or twitter uh, Curious Cars is over there, and I end up posting crap and torturing people, and people torture me, but uh, I like it because of the whole, you know, theoretical, I know it's not total free speech, but it's better than most other places on the internet, and uh, I figured, what the hell, I'm going to support that, so, uh, so I'm still dicking around with that. Um, I hired Chris, again, the worst human on earth, to bring my cars up uh, to this auction, uh, which again runs on Friday. Uh, he's going to use my truck and trailer. He showed up last night wearing this to survey. His, and I mean, imagine that you're working all day, your day, and then that shows up. And I mean, what the hell? Are you, I mean, what do you do? What do you do? I just ended up going home and had another whiskey and went to sleep because it's. You know, my mom always said, show me your friends and I'll show you yourself. And honestly, there's just no more terrifying words that I can think of. But look, anyway, look, let's get back right into this car and, and run through it. And again, from the cars that I bought while drunk file, frankly, it's heading up. It's that special highlight of the cars that I bought while drunk, knee walking drunk. And, uh, and here it is. And I'm not going to, you know, I, it's grown on me. It's warmed my heart a little bit and I enjoy it and I like starting it and I like idling it around, but the tires are like 45 years old and uh, I just can't see myself driving it very far and it runs on Avgas by the way or at least that's what I've got in it now I had super for a while um, I th again the lady friend would frown if I asked her to drive it or even go for a ride in it the police probably won't appreciate the volume of the car uh, or, you know, that the pipes are coming through or the lack of tread on the tire. Uh, but look, let's start with what it is at its heart, which is a Pinto. It's a 1974 Pinto. It was Ford's first domestically produced subcompact. It was their first one. Uh, and it was headlined, highlighted, whatever. It was pushed by Lee Iacocca. And uh, the timing on it was really fortuitous. Uh, they hurried through design and production. It came together really fast in like half the time. It was the fastest, you know, conceived and designed and produced car in American history at that point. And uh, the timing was great because it was coming out just as the 70s gas crunch took hold. Just as people were moving away from big and efficient cars, the cars that we all love, and a little malaise era subcompact stuff that, you know, the Europeans had been driving. And of course, you know, there were some European cars, they were doing better, fuel mileage was mattering to people, and of course, Ford and Chevy and AMC, they all wanted to keep up with that. They'd been, you know, Ford had built the Falcon and uh, they had built, you know, some small cars through the years, but this was their first sort of designed to be American, small, efficient car. And, uh, and it worked right out of the bat. Its main competitors were the AMC Gremlin and the Chevy Vega. Uh, you know, <laughs> the Gremlin, for God's sake. Uh, maybe the Pacer later. Uh, and it easily outsold both of them. It managed to be affordable and kind of youthfully hip at the same time. And the recipe worked well enough for uh, almost a 10-year production run and 3 million units sold. Uh, in fact, Henry Ford the second bought one himself for use in his fleet and you know not not as a PR hype thing I mean he didn't publicize it they just had one and he was driving it around so uh, they became a little bit beloved and uh, that three million number doesn't include the mercury versions by the way which were the bobcats uh, there was a two-door sedan with a trunk a two-door hatchback uh, with a mostly glass rear hatch uh, and then it became all glass later on. And then the two-door wagon, and in the squire form like this, it had the same wood paneling setup that a country squire, much bigger wagon had. And uh, frankly, it looked pretty cool. They made some special editions, they made some camper, you know, all that 70s hipster stuff, one with a rear back window on it. And uh, it just fit in very well with the times. And frankly, 
is a handsome design. It has nice flowing curves to it. Um, you know, back at the day, in the 80s, as a kid, I would have made fun of this thing mercilessly. I look at it now and I kind of dig it. And uh, I guess that's just what happens as time goes on. The same thing happened with me and my lady friend. Um, more importantly, it was light. Uh, and what if you wanted a light car, but 2.3 liters and a single carburetor just weren't enough? Uh, what if you wanted six carburetors? What if you wanted 406 cubic inches? <laughs> well, this guy gave the answer to that question, and he took his very efficient little Pinto wagon and uh, turned it into this. And drag racers, well, all racers really, uh, they love light cars because the better the power to weight ratio, the faster you're gonna be at the track. It's why a Shelby Cobra is gonna be significantly faster than a Ford Fairlane, even if they have the exact same drivetrain, engine, trans, rear end, all of that. Uh, weight makes such an enormous difference. Uh, and the small cars of the 70s ended up presenting kind of a boon to drag racers. Uh, uh, they could shoehorn a 350 V8 into a Chevy Vega or put a 302 into a Pino, and the car would become very fast without even bothering to do much else. They didn't even have to really hop up the motor. The thing just didn't weigh anything. So having a few hundred horse under the hood with a lightweight body, and uh, the thing would be very, very quick. One thing though that people didn't do was put FE big blocks into Pintos because that would be silly. It would be absolutely ridiculous. For instance, there'd be no room to run your exhaust. Uh, you'd have to come up with some strange way to vent the exhaust out of the car. And you know, who's gonna think of how to do that? Uh, and it would be cartoonish. The whole engine compartment would be cartoonish. And if for some reason they did put a big block in it, uh, it's unlikely that they'd need to use more than one or two carburetors, but they certainly wouldn't need an Edelbrock X1 intake with six Strombergs. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. And again, that is kind of what drew me to this thing was just uh, that it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the car was apparently a barn find. It was tucked away and forgotten in the late 70s or early 80s. Uh, the tires would sure seem to confirm that. I mean, those slicks, those ET drag Mickey Thompsons haven't been made since the 70s in a 14 inch radial, radial, or tubes and shit, but uh, in a 14 inch uh, version. It just hasn't. Uh, this tire was made in the 1970s. I don't remember the last time I saw Remington XT 120 radials, but again, I'm gonna guess same setup. And there were photos of it when I bought it on the auction site you know, emerging from this barn where it had been stored for many years. And I guess the guys put it together, uh, made it run, flushed it all out, and then they brought it to the auction because they didn't know what the hell to do with it either. Uh, we'll have a look under the hood on this thing. Put the hood pins. It's a fiberglass hood, by the way, which is very, oh God, hard to put up. Oh, you have to stretch. All right, so there it is. That is a Ford FE block. Uh, Brandon, my paint guy, fabricated a grill for it. It didn't have one. God bless him. He seemed to enjoy doing it. Uh, but it, this is a huge motor. It came out in the early 60s as, you know, People were demanding more torque, more horsepower. The 406 ran for a couple of years only uh, as their hot motor. They put it in the fair lanes. It would run at NASCAR and at the track, that sort of thing. But it, it lasted a couple of years before it was replaced by the uh, by the 427. And uh, that it, big block Ford just has been used for so many years and so many applications from truck duty to Le Mans duty. I mean, it's just a very versatile hot rod a bull big block and uh, to see it sitting in this little pinto frame is just silly you see how they had to angle the exhaust up into the hood there was no way to run it down the side of the motor and back so that was it uh that insane intake which uh, i think is just <laughs> 
Yes, and that's one of the things that drew me to it, quite honestly. Uh, the master cylinder didn't fit in the original location, so they had to put it on a stick and run it up to the front of the car. And uh, then you've got, of course, a radiator and a cooling fan. Uh, we'll walk around the whole thing. What the hell while we're here? Uh, anyway, that's going through a Ford C3 automatic that's obviously built uh, into a Ford 9-inch rear end, which is what you'd expect. Uh, there are ladder bars, there's stiffeners underneath, you know, all these things that would make it uh, more stable at the track. But quite frankly, this thing is more of a, a conversation piece than an actual drag racer. I think one would have to take their life into their hands to do that. But uh, since I'm looking here, so there it is. Here's the useful back area of a Ford Pinto now angled down. So if you put children in here, there's absolutely nowhere for them to go. Get this out for a minute. Here's the DW, the Dragon Wagon. And uh, if you hit the brakes real hard, they're going to fly forward, hit the back of your seats, and annoy you. So you're really going to have to come up with some sort of a way to strap them down. Uh, underneath that snap-on thing is not a spare tire, but the battery, I guess, for weight. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is actually a pretty well-preserved Pinto under it all. Uh, I'd really kind of enjoy this car as a driver for a while if it weren't, you know, what it is. It came with this card, which was, you know, I guess found with the car in the 70s, the guy who put it together, uh, the big block. I'm a little skeptical of the 14 to one because it runs fine on Super. I don't think it has <laughs> 4,000 horsepower, but God bless him. Uh, and anyway, there it is, the Dragon Wagon Pinto Squire. Uh, six coats of uh, factory grabber blue and uh, all very, very cool stuff. Have a look inside. Oh, gosh, I'm digging into the ground. I did that earlier, just moving around on these rocks. All right, so in here you've got, uh, you know, what you'd expect from a Pinto. you got a couple bucket seats. you got your e-brake in the middle. Uh, you got 70s style door panels with window cranks and door poles and you know you can see why these cars worked uh as a, you know they're just they're I, I don't know if they're very well put together but they do have a charming look to them uh, they did put a little three-prong racy steering wheel in it uh very period correct sun tack uh super tech 2 sitting on the column strapped to it the way it would be you got your gauges behind it 84,000 miles on it which i believe uh lights wiper washer switch uh still has the am am radio in it uh here's the kool-aid fan switch the fuel pump switch your climate control uh ashtray because of course people still smoked in the 70s there's some sort of a control module in here might be for the tack don't know what it is but that's your glove box. You still got the visors and the interior light still works. So uh, all pretty neat stuff. We have a fire extinguisher in the back, which is probably fortuitous. And uh, this B&M pure right out of the 70s quick shift shifter, uh, ratcheting shifter with reverse lockout. Reminds me of the B&M mega shifter I had in my uh, Firebird back in the 80s. And it's just kind of cool and fun to dick around with. Uh, and it had three weird old gauges, which I included with the car, but I replaced them with these uh, auto meters uh, in the console because I thought that looked a little bit better. And uh, there it is. So anyway, that's the inside. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to get the hood down. Well, I tell you what, I'll fire it up for a minute. Nah, I won't. I'm going to get the hood down and then we're just going to go for a very quick, very calm spin up the street because there is just no way that I am going to abuse... 45 year old tires i have no fear of dying at all i mean bring it on bring on the warm sweet embrace of death it's fine uh, i do have a fear of the car breaking in half if i start trying to brutalize it because i'm sure it hasn't been put through its paces in you know 40 years so don't don't hold it against me i just don't want to deal with a broken hot rod pinno this morning anyway i'm going to pause for one minute and we'll go for a quick drive god help us all all right, so let's do this. With any luck, some of the neighbors are still asleep. I'll leave the door open for a minute for effect. Not that it matters much. All right, let's do this and try not to get arrested. Definitely not a pin drop. I don't think it matters if you 
you have a stereo. Uh, so foot hard on the brake. And uh, got more of a idle there. Ratchet it back. There's reverse. And there's drive. Furthest I've ever driven this. Get this out on the street because I really don't want to spend the day in prison. But I can see how this thing would be a lot of fun at the racetrack. you really want to piss off your homeowners association that's going to be a good way to do it so this uh friday let me turn this up this friday at the uh punta gorda premier auction your chance to own what is conceivably the least practical car in the world so thank you for having a look really appreciate it we will see you with the next one take care